Welcome to channel Dental Notes and Mnemonics. Uh, today we will be discussing about two often confused oral conditions, leukoplakia and lichen planus. Although they both appear and present as uh, white patches in the mouth, they differ significantly in their causes, symptoms and risk. So stay with me as we discuss the key differences between these two conditions and discuss why early identification is critical for effective management. So without any delay, let's begin. Oral leukoplakia as per Neville's Oral and Maxillofacial Pathology book, it's a clinical term which is used for white patches or plaques on the oral mucosa that cannot be rubbed off and cannot be diagnosed as any other condition. It is considered a potentially malignant disorder, meaning there is a risk of progression to oral cancer. Well, according to Schaefer's textbook of oral pathology and WHO uh, definition of oral lichen planus, oral lichen planus is a chronic mucocutaneous disease of unknown etiology, thought to be immune mediated, primarily affecting the oral mucosa. It presents as bilateral, often symmetrical white reticular lesions which are also known as Wickham's trier which may also include erythematous, erosive or ulcerative areas. If we talk about the incidence of both the oral lesions then these both are relatively uncommon conditions but their incidence rates and affected populations differ. While well, leukoplakia is seen in approximately 1 to 2 percent of global population it is more frequently diagnosed in older adults, particularly those with a history of tobacco use or excessive alcohol consumption. Men are more commonly affected than women, largely due to higher rates of tobacco use in males. Since leukoplakia is considered a potentially pre-malignant condition, its prevalence is closely monitored in the population at higher risk of oral cancers. In contrast to leukoplakia, it affects 1 to 2 percent of the population with slightly higher incidence in the women compared to men. This autoimmune condition typically develops in middle age adults. Unlike leukoplakia, lichen planus is not strongly associated with lifestyle factors just such as smoking or alcohol use. It can also affect other parts of the body including skin, genital mucosa and nails. If we talk about the clinical presentation of both the oral lesions, leukoplakia present as white patch or plaque on the mucous membrane of mouth, particularly on gums, inner cheek or the tongue. These uh, patches are usually thickened, well defined and cannot be wiped off. In case of lichen planus, it appears as white lacy patterns or reticular striations which is also known as Wickham stria on the mucous membrane. In some cases, it can also present as ulcerated erythematous and which is more painful variant of the oral lichen planus. Oral leukoplakia can be classified into two main types based on the clinical appearance, homogeneous and non-homogeneous. Uh, these distinctions are very important because they help in assessing the potential risk of malignancy. In homogeneous leukoplakia, it presents as a uniform, flat, thin white plaque and the surface is typically smooth or slightly corrugated and it lacks any area of redness and ulcerations. In case of the non-homogeneous leukoplakia, it is more irregular in appearance and may present as combination of white patches interspersed between the red patches which is also known as erythroleukoplakia. The surface may also be nodular, verrucous or even ulcerated form. Based on the clinical presentation, uh, reticular lichen planus is the most common uh, type of oral lichen planus. It appears as a network of fine white lines on the mucous membranes. Apart from the reticular lichen planus, uh, other clinical types are erosive lichen planus, plaque-like lichen planus, atrophic lichen planus and the bullous lichen planus. Characteristic of all the clinical types has been described in this uh, table. So you may pause the video here and take a snapshot. There is a comparison of common sites affected by leukoplakia and lichen planus. The most common sites affected by leukoplakia include the buccal mucosa, the inner cheeks uh, in buccal mucosa most frequently. 
the site of leukoplakia especially in the individual with a history of tobacco use then the lateral borders of the tongue and the ventral surface of the tongue are also affected leukoplakia can appear under the tongue often in areas of chronic irritation and also it can occur in the palate both hard palate and soft palate uh, particularly in smokers now the common sites affected by the oral uh, lichen planus include the buccal mucosa similar to leukoplakia the inner cheeks are the common site often with lacy appearance gingiva uh, the gum tissues can also show white lacy lesions or erosive form of lichen planus in tongue the white patches or erosions can appear on the tongue surface and in the palate it may also be involved uh, presenting with white streaks on the sores talk about the associated symptoms in leukoplakia is uh, typically asymptomatic but it may cause discomfort if irritated burning sensations or the significant sensitivity is very rare though the redness or ulcers could indicate irritation on dysplasia on the other hand uh, lichen planus is often painful especially in erosive forms it may cause burning sensations and increase sensitivity and can include itching particularly with the skin lesions and redness or ulcers in the mouth it may be linked with the systemic autoimmune conditions as well etiology of leukoplakia is mainly chronic irritation from tobacco use or alcohol consumption other factors which may contribute to this lesion is uh, it may be occasionally linked with uh, hpv infections but not typically associated with autoimmune factors or the systemic conditions while on the other hand lichen planus is uh, autoimmune in nature and it is often triggered by stress and the systemic conditions this is not associated with the tobacco or alcohol use but it may be related to other autoimmune disease and sometimes a viral infections as well when it comes to diagnosis leukoplakia is evaluated based on the clinical appearance and often requires a biopsy to rule out dysplasia or malignancy histologically it may show hyperkeratosis or even cancerous changes Lichen planus however is diagnosed through clinical examination and biopsy. Histopathology of leukoplakia can show a hyperkeratosis, dysplasia, basal cell uh, layer shows abnormal changes, inflammatory infiltrate but that is uh, minimal or absent. And uh, sub epithelial changes are often insignificant in leukoplakia. while uh, the lichen planus shows the hyperkeratosis as well similar to leukoplakia there is also basal cell degeneration or the liquefaction degeneration of the basal cell layer creating a saw tooth appearance inflammatory infiltrate uh, is uh, very much prominent uh, they appear as a dense band like lymphocytic infiltrate just beneath the epithelium treatment approaches to leukoplakia vary significantly uh, for leukoplakia management often involves removing the irritants and if necessary surgical excision or laser therapy especially if there is a risk of cancer regular monitoring is crucial for better prognosis while the lichen planus is typically managed with corticosteroids uh, either uh, topical or systemic or other medications to control the symptoms treatment focusing on reducing the inflammation and alleviating discomfort let's consider the clinical aspect for leukoplakia patient edu- education is key and the patient should be advised to stop or completely avoid tobacco and alcohol and ensuring the regular dental checkups on the other hand managing a lichen planus involves avoiding irritants addressing the stress with ongoing treatment to improve the quality of the life while leukoplakia carries a risk of progression to cancer lichen planus is chronic but manageable with the right treatment approach so hereby i am summarizing all the uh, points which you should remember to differentiate between the leukoplakia and the oral lichen planus watching the video i hope you like this and uh, it uh, helped you to better understand the key differences between oral leukoplakia and lichen planus If you found this content helpful please give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this 
Feel free to leave any questions or topics you would like me to cover in the comment section below. Stay healthy. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye. Take care.